Good evening. Welcome to Lucen City Council regular meeting on Monday, February 23rd, 2015. We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, first item of business is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please join Mayor Pro Tem R.J. Johnson in citing the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Um, next up is citizen comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to address the council on agenda items or other items they wish to bring to the attention of the council. Citizens are encouraged to discuss operational issues in advance with the city manager. In consideration of others wishing to speak, speak please limit your remarks to three minutes. Um, before we get started, if there's anybody here to testify on the public hearing, we prefer that you hold your comments for the public hearing so we can keep that all in one piece. But, uh, that being said, do we have any citizen comments this evening? Name and address for the record when you get up. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, council members, my name is Patrick Lean. I live at 432 Stewart Avenue in Lewiston. And I'm here tonight um, to object to the continued modification for, to the reason statement that is on your agenda. I'm gonna read this document to you and I've also provided a copy of it to each one of you. Uh, I object to the city council's changes to the reason statement without a public hearing. The density increase proposed specifically contradicts the planning and zoning decision that was required in order to issue the conditional use permit. A new public hearing should be held by planning and zoning to address such changes. The parking variance requires a public hearing and has a direct impact on the density of the development. I object to the city of Lewiston continues to permit development to proceed in spite of remand from the court. Uh, Judge Stegner ruled in my favor three weeks ago. The conditional use permit in my mind has been set aside and the developer continues to build. The city should order development halted until new public hearings are held. The developer continues the development of the property with no conditional use permit. The developer continues to take actions which are inconsistent with the project that was approved. Examples, public walkway is not handicap accessible. The existing house on the property has been leased in spite of requirement in the conditional use permit that it be demolished or used as part of the project. The location of the access road on Stewart Avenue is closer to the 17th Street intersection than was submitted and allowed in the traffic study and is in conflict with the standards referenced in the traffic study. The mitigation submitted in the traffic study for third party review was then removed after the third party review. The builder has failed to meet the parking requirement to apply for a conditional use permit. Lewiston City Code 37-163 standards governing conditional uses states a minimum of one parking space per three dwelling units dedicated to recreational vehicle or boat shall be provided. What's missing from the development is 40 parking spaces. It was never in the application. Um, I thank you for your time. If you have any questions for me, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, I'm gonna go sit down if you get to this active agenda item and you have any questions for me or I need to clarify anything, please ask. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lee. Mayor, members of the council, um, I'm Bob Tippett, 4018 Fairway Drive, also Nez Perce County Commission. I just want to verify, uh, you, you mentioned uh, public comment at uh, opening of the meeting except for public meet hearing, public meeting or public hearing, and is this a reading of uh, item F, will that be an open mic uh, for public input? 
Uh, probably not. The third reading and adoption? On our active agenda? Yes. No, this would be the appropriate time to address. Well, there's there's one item in there, Nez Perce County, as you are aware, uh, the ACI or the Area City Impact was put together with a committee. Three of you sat on that, Bob uh, Blakey, uh, Jed Randall, and yourself, Mr. Mayor. And we worked through months of meetings to discuss the ACI and prepare a new map and come up with uh, plans for adoption or changing the ordinance and also a recommendation for comprehensive plan. The, our staff, our building staff, and the city's building staff working together on an ordinance, and you have that tonight, I believe, on your agenda. That's not the item I'm talking about, because I'm talking about item F. Um, but on your agenda, under item F is a modification or a change to your comprehensive plan. And I think it'd be wise if the city's comprehensive plan and the county's comprehensive plan associated with the area city impact were the same. And there are a couple of differences, particular, particularly in the area um, under the goal statement and policies. I don't know if you have those in front of you, but there are six items on the recommendation of your staff on the ordinance. This is attachment F of the ordinance uh, 4624. In that ordinance, uh, Mr. Mayor, if, unless people want to look at that first, In that ordinance, there are four items, or six items recommended uh, in policies. And that's where we have a major dis difference, and I think we ought to talk about it. Policy number one, two, and three, we agree with. We don't have a problem with that. But policy number four states, Nez Perce County should require construction of right-of-ways and utilities when adjacent to city limit or existing public services. We are recommending that that item state, Nesters County should require construction of roads and utilities when adjacent to existing public services. Now the biggest difference there is not easements, but roads, but adjacent to city limits or adjacent public utilities. We don't believe that a person who is a mile away from utilities, water, sewer, or streets should be required to put in water, sewer, and streets until they're available to them at their property. So we're saying if it's adjacent to the property of the public utility, we should require them to continue that on. That's also saying that if the lot next to that or the property next to that, five acres or 20 acres, is adjacent to public utilities being provided, they should be required to put it on. But we shouldn't require people to put that in if there isn't any service available to them at the moment. Particularly what's happened or discussion we've heard is, well, we should make them put it in because sometime in the future, and nobody knows when that might be, that could be 20 years, that could be 50 years, but sometime in the future the city might be out there. But we're asking these people, put in a sewer line it won't be used, so you'll have to put septic in also. So we're adding to the cost of development to these people. Put in water or a well, but put in for water in case we might build it out there sometimes in the future. We're saying, again, the county is saying in your policies and your comprehensive plan, you should require it, we should require it, if it's available. The other item, number six. In the Lewis and ACI, Nespers County will require construction of plat all platted rights away with adjacent development. I don't think the city is in a position to tell the county they will do something. I think that item should be struck out of this uh, ordinance altogether. It should not even be in there because this is a plan. A planning document, as you know, is something that we would strive for, but it's not cut and dried. So my recommendation, Number four, we changed the wording I gave you, and number six, be struck. That information was sent to Laura on the 17th of February, or to actually to, uh, I believe it was also sent to Jim Bennett. So that recommendation, I didn't know if it reached you or not, but it should have reached you by then. So, Mr. Mayor, that's all I have to say if there's anybody has any questions. Uh, Commissioner, do you happen to have that specific language? I have it right here. Like it or should? Sure. Are there any other questions? 
Thank you very much. Yep. Do we have any other citizen comments tonight? Brian Steele, 1927 Burl. Uh, I agree with Mr. Tippett. I was at that meeting today, and in the policies that he was just talking to you about, number six in specific, when you read that, having the county or saying that they will require the building of roads. In the ACI, I do own a piece of property that is about a five acre piece that is accessible with two platted roads, one being airway, the other 19th Street. 19th Street would be a 60 foot road. Airway, I believe it's 20. Last week after I read this, I did email Laura Von Tersch with the city and basically asked her in fact, the ACI members, uh, Mr. Randall, Mr. Blakely, and the mayor, all received that email too. And I asked her, if number six goes through, will I be required to put in both roads? Because that's how that ordinance reads, put in both, both streets. Her answer was no. I would like to know, this ordinance isn't even done yet, and they're already saying a different answer to what's printed there. You know, if, if, if a person has to put in both those roads, it's gonna cost you more to do that than put a house there. But before the ink's dry, and you guys have voted on it, I already have an email that says, I don't have to do what you want the, city, the county to require. So please take that in consideration and, and scratch number six, and also listen to Mr. Tippett on number four. Thank you. Thanks, sir. Anybody else? Going once? Okay. All right. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll move on to public hearings and presentations. Uh, first up is we have a public hearing uh, for a vacation VA 02 14, a request for the vacation of portions of 24th Street. 15th Avenue in an alley, all lying between 16th Avenue and the alley located south of 14th Avenue. Mr. Hayhurst. Good evening, mayor and council members. As always, it's a pleasure to be here. What I've got for you tonight, as the mayor just said, is a request from Rogers Motors to uh, vacate some undeveloped por portions of 24th Street, 15th Avenue, and an adjacent alley to enable them to join 10 parcels of land that they own so they can effectively use them for their business. Go ahead and get you oriented here. Um, North is to the top on the, on the drawing that I've got here. Uh, the pink and red striped area here is the, is the area that is requested to be vacated. 16th Avenue runs along the bottom here. 14th Avenue along the top. The alley that we're speaking about that's the north limit is this alley right through here. Uh, and of course on the East side over here, this is the police training center. And these are uh, parking areas um, for Rogers Motors plus uh, Blue Linen Supply Company in here. The area was originally subdivided by the Rand Edition in 1890, another one of those old plats. None of the rights away in the requested vacation area were ever developed for public use except for some utility installations. Adjacent portions of 15th Avenue and the alley south of 15th Avenue, located west of the requested vacation area, were vacated in 2007 by council action. Uh, 
There's another picture that just kind of lays this out for you. Again, the area to be vacated in this fluorescent yellow. The blue is all of the parcels that Rogers Motors own currently. So you can see how if this is vacated, how it would connect all these parcels over here and make one large usable area for them. Here's a photo. I'm standing in 16th Avenue when I took this, this photo, looking north. Uh, the sign here is about in the middle of this right away that's to be vacated. You can see, if you look very closely, you can see the extension of 24th Street up on this very end. So this is the upper area, the southern area of the area to be vacated. And going down on the other end, this is 14th Avenue, 24th Street, a small portion that has been built, and then again the area up in here that's to be vacated. You can see some of the grading that's been done by Rogers Motors over this time period since they've owned all this, all the land adjacent to this right away. The uh, areas that I referred to of 15th Avenue and the alley south of 15th Avenue that have been uh, vacated in the past are these areas that are showing up very bright in here. So you can see that what's left over here basically, especially 15th Avenue in this alley, these are just little remnants that are left. In compliance with the Lewiston Vacation Ordinance, Mr. Rogers has submitted all of the required paperwork, the required fee, and a consent letter from the one other adjacent landowner, who is Gary Stakowski. City staff has completed all of their required actions. The city has no current or future plans to construct any streets or alleys in the requested vacation area. 23rd Street pr uh, provides an adequate connection between 14th Avenue and 16th Avenue. In fact, the Lewiston Comprehensive Plan actually recommends the vacation of both 24th Street and 15th Avenue in this area. So when you look at this, this is just backed out a little bit to show more of the surrounding area. Um, this is 23rd right over here. 23rd is actually the extension of Juniper. So when Juniper comes down the down the hill eventually when it's developed, comes through here. 23rd is still available to bring the traffic right on through and then disperse out wherever they would like to go. 24th is kind of a, it was platted this way, but it was, it was originally thought that this would all be residential development. With all the commercial development and the large parcels in here, there's really, uh, in our opinion at least, or my opinion, there is really no, that, no reason to to keep 24th Street through here in that area. Both the Lewiston Comprehensive Plan and the Lewiston Parks and Open Space Master Plan recommend that the city be alert to opportunities to expand Sunset Park. The Lewiston Parks and Recs Department Director responded to this recommendation with the following. The expansion of Sunset Park to the south is not a high priority at this point in time. Expenditures for the improvement of other park areas such as community park and the orchards are of a higher priority. Again, going back to this drawing, you can see Sunset Park is up in this area. The city does own this parcel in here where the police training center is, some storage yards and so forth in here, but it would be kind of an awkward expansion uh, in parks, in the parks department's eyes right now to bring this through and then expand out kind of into a, an area over in here. Like I said, it's commercial area really wouldn't be that amenable for an expansion of the park. In recent years, the old junkyard on the Matthewson parcel has been cleared and purchased by Rogers Motors, and I might as well just leave this up here. <laughs> okay. A new section that was this area here. In fact, this image is old enough you can still see the, um, whatever you'd like to call it, the uh, junkyard, I guess is the best term. This has all been cleaned up now. 
Rogers Motors has purchased these parcels that underlaid that and has regraded a lot of this area to make usable space for their operation. A new section of curb and gutter has been installed by Rogers Motors to prevent the flow of stormwater from 16th Avenue across the Rogers Motors parcels and the requested vacation area. They've also completed a grading project that I've been speaking about that resulted in the creation of three large areas for future use. This grading has resulted in some minor erosion from internal stormwater flow. This erosion has been limited to, to the graded area so far, but a large storm event could result in stormwater discharge onto adjacent parcels or public rights of way. Rogers has submitted a plan to address this stormwater issue, and the plan has been approved by the city engineer. The construction will take place after the area dries out. The short, the, the short section of 24th Street between 14th Avenue and the alley south of 14th Avenue will not become a true dead end street if the vacation petition is approved. That was a concern of ours. The existing alley provides a connection to 23rd Street that can be used in lieu of making a U-turn. So if you, look, if you look closely here, vacating 24th Street to here, this is an active area that's been built, active street. But there is, this is actually a pretty good graded graveled alley, this portion. So in reality, if you come up here, you do not have to make a U-turn here or try to get turned back around to go back. You can come out this way and it's actually a pretty good alley. So that, uh, that is a positive point. The only utility with active lines in the requested vacation area is CenturyLink. They have an underground communications cable located inside the west line of the 21st Street right away north of 16th Avenue. If the requested vacation is approved, the landowners adjacent to the vacated right-of-way will take possession of the vacated land as specified by the council decision. The proposed division of the vacated property would give Rogers Motors all of the vacated area except for the half width of 24th Street adjacent to Mr. Stakowski's parcel. City staff has verified with both parties that both parties desire to have the vacated area divided in this manner. So going back to this drawing, all of the yellow area then would go to Rogers Motors except for this little half street, half portion of 24th right in here would go to Mr. Stakowski. This is his property next door where he has, he's developed a parking lot. The request for vacation comments from utility providers and other departments and agencies resulted in the following specific responses. The city surveyor and the city water and wastewater managers supported the vacation but, but wanted easements reserved for any existing utilities and for stormwater drainage if needed. CenturyLink had no objection to the requested vacation but, but wanted utility and maintenance access easements reserved for their existing underground cable. C cable 1 stated that they would wish any utility right-of-way or easements remain intact for the maintenance or future construction of plant, which is the common statement we get from them basically saying any right-of-ways vacated they would like to see an easement for, for future installations. All other potential commenters did not object to the vacation or did not respond at all. The requested right-of-way vacation area is approximately 1.2 to nine acres in size with, with an approximate value of $124,000 based on the Nez Perce County assessment value of six adjacent land parcels. <coughs> Staff recommendations. Staff recommends that the City Council approve the requested right-of-way vacation with the following conditions. As allowed by state statutes and the City Vacation Ordinance, the allocation of the vacated area will be made as follows. Rogers Motors will receive 1.15 acres and Gary Stokowski will receive the 0.14 acres adjacent to his property. A public utility easement will be reserved over the west 20 feet of the parcel that Mr. Stokowski will receive from, from the vacation. Again, that would be in this cross-hatched area and the cable lies right along the property line on the west side of that, so there'll be an easement right here is what we would should reserve. The minor stormwater erosion issue in the newly graded areas of the requested vacation area will be addressed to the satisfaction of the city engineer 
before the council approves the resolution implementing this vacation. That's my presentation. Okay. So, any questions? Um, I just have two, actually. Sure. Uh, this picture here, it's one where we're looking south, up towards the property. Yes. And we're looking south. So we've not heard that homeowner. I, if I heard you right, did not did not reply or did not suggest did not reply to the. No. Uh, so we didn't hear from him. He had no problems. No, I did have I, I did have one. One uh, citizen came in to talk to me, and let me get the appropriate image. Yeah, he just seems to be the most, the closest that would be affected yeah. by this project. He's the closest, but he's got, he's across the alley, so there's a public right of way dividing him and the area that will be vacated. Okay. You know, and um, then I had, uh, if I can find my notes, uh, Mr. Everhart lives. Right here, there's there's two parcels that he owns. He's got a long, thin lot through here. He came in and talked to me in the office, and his concern was this vac this alley back here would be vacated. And I said, no, it won't be. This none of this alleyway here will be vacated. It only starts on the south side of the alley and proceeds south, and that satisfied him completely. He was fine. Uh, and my second question is. By making this a dead end, and maybe this is a question for the fire chief, I'm not so sure, <coughs> will we be able to still uh, pull a fire engine in there and be able to turn it around? Does there need to be some modification at the end of the street to, for turnarounds that we have on some of our dead ends? Um, I would probably refer to the, to the fire chief. Um, in this case where this street has been built, it's been this way for I don't know how many years this way. It is a very wide street, and the, the alleyway there actually is wide enough, developed right away, to where you actually have what we call a hammerhead turnaround that they could turn there if they needed to. My opinion, it's good, but the fire chief would be the I would have ultimate. To go and, and drive that to look, but from my recollection, it's been a while since I've been there. I believe we would not have a problem with it, but um, if you'd like, we can definitely find out and call it a council. All right. Not necessary. Okay. Any other questions? Okay, thanks, Dan. Is the applicant here? Would you like to say something? Yeah. Mayor and council members, my name is Richard Rogers. I'm co-owner of Rogers Motors. Um, I'm here for this vacation. The address. Address is 2203 16th Avenue is our business address. My home address is 103 Marine View Court in Lewiston. Thank you. I'd just like to say that we've worked with the uh, city, with Dan and, and Sean, and have worked through this process. It's, it's been good. Uh, we accumulated lots over the last seven or eight years that disjoined. Then when the junkyard became available, after it was cleared off, we purchased that, and what we've tried to do is blend these two lots together, and this road <coughs> runs right down to the middle of it. So that was our reasoning for the vacation. Mm -hmm. And we would appreciate it, and if you have any questions you'd like to ask me, please do. Questions? Thanks, Rich. Thank you. Okay, at this point, we'll go ahead and open this public hearing. Uh, if there's anybody in the audience that wishes to speak in favor or opposed, please come down, state your name, address for the record. Mr. Mayor, City Council, um, my name is Carol McBride. My address is 140324th Street. Um, the proposed roadway would come right in front of my home. And looking at the the plan, 23rd Street is already an arterial that services both sides of Rogers Motors for both lots. And there's also ample access on 16th Avenue in several areas. If you look at the map from 23rd Street over to Sunset Park, and from 15th Avenue down to 11th Avenue, that entire area is residential. And 
So by opening up the arterial through um, 24th Street, would blend the commercial with residential and increase traffic, which is a major concern. I'm right on the corner of 14th and 24th Street, so that area then would be um, traffic coming down from um, from the 16th Avenue area, which is primarily Joe Hall Ford and Rogers Motors. So I am opposed because of the area right now is, like I said, primarily residential. And I would like to um, have the council and Mr. Mayor consider that um, in your decision. Thank you. Okay, uh, ma'am, just, ma'am? Yes. Just for clarification, uh, they're not proposing to build the road there. They're proposing to not, to dead end it to there. Not build a road there. To That's dead correct. end it. Yes. And also along the alleyway there, that is a narrow, a fairly narrow um, alleyway. It's a one vehicle alley. Okay. Thank you. Just saying. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, I guess we'll go ahead and close this public meeting. Mr. Rogers, did you want to address her concerns or like we had send Dan up to explain it? Um, and Mr. Mayor Council, I, I honestly don't understand her point very well. Um, yeah, this will be vacated, which means that there it will never be built. If I understood uh, Mrs. McBride right, she lives on this corner lot, right in that area, okay? 14th and 24th. And so I, I just, maybe I just didn't understand well enough, but I don't know how this would have a... Um, a bad effect on your on your property? Maybe I, I misunderstood. I did not realize that was going to dead end there on 15. Basically, everything will stay the same as it is right now. You know how, how the area to the south of you there, 24th Street has it just ends there. And that's what it will continue to be, except for the alleyway that proceeds west from, from there. Everything to the south will be gone, and so that guarantees that 24th Street will never be built unless some miraculous thing happens in the future and we get another right away and decide we have to build a street there but this pretty much prevents the street ever being built okay 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 thank you yeah. question? question yeah question just to help miss mcbride nothing prevents the if we do approve it at the city council level in the future nothing prevents the developer or the owner of the property at that point in time to make a service entrance though at that end of the street. There could be a future service entrance onto the property if it was further developed. That, that is a possible future development? That is true, actually. Uh, we might want to have Mr. Rogers address that. The way it's graded right now, that would not be a very uh, feasible way of accessing the property. But, but it's a possibility. It is a possibility, yes. Yeah, we've learned from prior meetings that Steepness of ground doesn't mean anything. You can, with enough money, you can build anything on anything. True. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So maybe, so I can understand this, your question, Bob, was if the access to the property on 16th Avenue or no, on the one that, on the property right now that we're vacating, yes. could you, and my question is, we understand it will no longer be a street, Mrs. McBride, I think we answered her question, but my question would be, you could develop a service entrance to your property in the future. You, it could be a, an entrance that's used for business purposes at some point in time. Um, well, we would have to come, if I'm not mistaken, and Dan could help me, I think, but we would have to come from our existing, like our existing employee parking lot. We're not going to come south off the street that we're trying to vacate 
because that's that's closed off where we graded it and so there's no way to you know we we wouldn't come in that way um, right now from our employee parking lot there's three levels that we leveled in in its three different elevations and you could drive out from our employee parking lot and and that's one level then right below it is another house that is, is level and then you can drive out on the upper level from blue ribbon laundry they have an entrance off of 16th that you can drive into it so i don't know if i'm answering the question right but the only way i know how to get to the property is from the lower level uh from uh, west to east and from our employee parking lot going east but coming south um, from the street that we're vacating south of the alley it's you know it's we're a lot higher and it's all built up it's closed off so we wouldn't no we would not enter it there okay so that's your intent but mr ayers it is possible that some development it it's not completely it's not ruled out of the picture that maybe not rogers motors but some future developer could put an entrance to their business from that street that could be a possible okay. you know, possibility in the future and and at that point i would think that zoning regulations and some of the other things that i'm not qualified to talk about might restrict that flow might restrict that entrance okay just want to mm -hmm. make sure we discuss it that's all thank you anything else okay well i'd entertain a motion to approve uh, vacation va02-14 so moved second motion's been made and seconded discussion i just briefly to follow up on your comments Councilor blakey um 16th avenue is a lighted intersection coming off 21st 14th is not yeah i mean really there's no utility in trying to bring an entrance from a non-signal intersection so just ask it okay any other discussion seeing none all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries seven to zero thank you everybody okay moving on to the consent agenda uh yes I'd like to pull items d and e okay we'll pull items d and e and make those active item k and active item l we have another one yes okay and item f will be active item m any other changes okay i'll entertain a motion to read the consent agenda as amended second motion has been made and seconded all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. opposed motion carries seven to zero approving the minutes of the january 22nd 2015 regular meeting february 2nd 2015 work session february 9th 2015 work session and the february 9th 2015 regular meeting Approving the minutes of the February 4th, 2015 Transportation Advisory Commission and the November 12th, 2014 Youth Advisory Commission. I'm sorry, D, E, and F, yes. Approving resolution 2015-17 by title only. A resolution pursuant to Idaho Code section 67, 2808 paren 2 declaring the intent of the city council to award a sole source contract for computer maintenance and capital improvements to control system technology incorporated of idaho falls idaho and providing an effective date approving the vouchers payable dated january 30th 2015 through February 12th, 2015, in the amount of $1,773,544.75. Okay, counselors, the consent agenda has been read as amended. We'll entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. Move. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries seven to zero. Okay, moving on to the active agenda. First item up is Patrick Lean, reason statement, approving an amended reason statement as per court order. Mr. Bennett, you want to introduce? Um, this is a result of a 
petition for judicial review that was uh, submitted to the court uh, based on the decision of the city council to uh, uphold the decision of the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, to approve the conditional use permit for the uh, Bloom apartment project. And um, the city attorney can go over the uh, decision from the court and what that means for the city and for the city council and the course of action that the city needs to take at this time. Okay. okay. Jamie? Mayor, yeah. <clears throat> council. Um, as you're aware, we had a, a petition for judicial review um, that was ruled on by Judge Stegner and in that, Judge Stegner addressed six issues, four of which he ruled in the city's favor, two of which he ruled in Mr. Lean's favor. Those two issues are remanded back to the city council or the city to act on them, one of which is um, a density calculation. The uh, Planning and Zoning Commission had calculated the 120 units that Mr. Uh, Bloom is building on that uh, property to be 12.1 units per acre. The court calculated it to be 12.77 units per acre. It is on an improved roadway. Our city code permits up to 15.4 units an acre. So right now it's well below what's permitted by our city code. So you will see in the amendments to the reason statement, and, and I have underlined them just so you have a reference of, of where we're at, um, that um, what we're asking the city council to do to remedy the basically a mathematical error um, is to permit Mr. Bloom to build the 120 units that he is committed to build, so long as it doesn't exceed what the code allows, which is 15.4 units an acre. We know by the calculation of the court that it's 12.77 units per acre right now. So based upon what the court calculated to be uh, buildable acreage at 9.4 acres. Now that may increase because as you're well aware, Mr. Bloom got um, some additional property vacated to him. I don't know if it's buildable acres or not by the city council in your last council meeting. However, he's there, he is not exceeding what's permitted by city code. And the reason that we're simply doing an amendment to the reason statement is because it's not exceeding what's permitted by city code. The 12.1 units an acre was something that was determined by the Planning and Zoning Commission on their own volition. City Council can make it anything less than 15.4 units an acre. But we have a commitment that he will not build more than 120 units total. So. That's why you have the amended reason statement as it is on that issue. The second issue has to do with a requirement for um, RV and boat parking. The court determined that that requires a variance that does require a public hearing. Uh, that will go before the Planning and Zoning Commission for a public hearing and then come to you and the City Council with whatever their recommendation is on that variance. And because it is a public hearing, I'm not going to comment on it as it's obviously it's an ex parte um, or um, it's a judicial proceeding, and so um, we'll wait and see what comes before the Planning Commission and what comes before the Council. You're not obligated to hold a second uh, public hearing unless there's an appeal, and if there's an appeal, we'll simply go through the, the appeal process that I outlined earlier this year, which is to simply take the, the record as it exists from the Planning and Zoning Commission public hearing uh, and not create any new records. So, um, but... That's an issue that still has to be decided. At some point, it will come before the city council, but I'm not exactly sure which. We're hoping to get that. There are obviously publication requirements for a public hearing, notification requirements, and so that takes a couple of weeks or more. So we, we think that will go before the planning commission sometime in the second or third week in March. Okay. So that's where we're at. This is not this amended reason statement for um, the density does not require a public hearing, doesn't require to go back to the Planning and Building Commission because, as, again, he's not exceeded what the code allows. So we're simply asking you to approve the amended reason statement um, as it exists right now. And if there is a variance granted or not granted, then we'll have to deal with whatever the decision is on that. But um, for this issue, we can, we can go forward with it right now and take care of it. We don't have to wait for it. Okay. There were other issues that were raised by Mr. Lean, most of which were addressed by the court by deciding in the city's favor, some of which have to do with enforcement issues that really are not before the city council. So 
Um, the only two issues that came back to the court are RV and boat parking and the density requirement. And that's all that will be at the variance hearing. It will only be a hearing on the RV and boat parking. It won't be a hearing, full hearing on anything else. Okay. So. Anybody have any questions for Jamie? Questions on that? Um, so basically, per, per code, the current code, 3728, print 7, they could have up to 15.4 units per acre. And, but the, the term developable acres, that came out of PNZ, correct? The buildable acreage was something that was used in the Planning and Zoning Commission meeting, which the court kind of hooked on to. We don't use buildable acreage when we review applications for conditional use permits or variances. Buildable acreage is really what somebody referred to earlier. If you have enough money, you can take the top off of a hill and move hundreds of thousands of tons of rock and build the shopping center where Home, Home Depot, Depot is. It, yeah. it really is an economic sort of, if you have enough money, buildable acreage is whatever you want it to be. Um, so it's not something that we use in, in order to determine what density should be. We use what the code says, and the code is determined by whether or not it abuts an improved roadway or it abuts an unimproved roadway. In this case, um, as the judge pointed out, the city's allowed to use the fact that, it's in a, that it was improved by curb gutter and sidewalk by the developer, so it's an improved roadway, permits 15.4 units an acre. Okay. So, yeah, buildable acreage is a very difficult concept for us to use because it can be anything you can afford. Correct. I agree. Council Randall. I tend to disagree on the buildable uh, definition of the buildable because I believe there's a section in our uh, code, city code, that specifies that anything's over a certain grade is considered unbuildable. And so even though it may be buildable by money definition, it may not, it, our definition says it's not buildable. And that's as far as calculating the density. So, um, I mean, you can still make changes on that, I suppose. But uh, anyway, um, and as far as the density, I'm not gonna argue that point because the court, court's already decided that, but. Yeah. I guess I'd offer, again, the analogy of the, the Home Depot. I mean, that certainly wasn't suitable for building a big box store. But with enough money, that's a flat piece of ground. <clears throat> and if Mr. Bloom wanted to make that piece of property where he's at, even though there's a gradient to it, they could have imported fill material and they could have made that as flat as a pool table. It's just money. So that whatever the aerial photo outlines the property boundary, that is... That's the acreage. Mr. Mayor. Yes. <clears throat> I would strongly suggest that we have our uh, planning and zoning go through our uh, codes concerning that and see if there's anything in there that makes reference to buildable or developable land. And if there's a definition of that, maybe we need to review that definition. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, there is a definition in our planning and zoning code of buildable acreage. It simply is not on the checklist of things that the, that the planning and zoning commission considers for this for a conditional use permit application. So, um, and the court asked me why it's in there, and I, and I said, quite frankly, I don't know. It might apply to some other kind of development, but it doesn't apply to this. So, so if you want, if you want the planning and zoning commission to look at that, they can certainly take a look at it. And okay. Anything further? Well, I guess I'd accept a motion to approve an amended, the amended reason statement as per the court order. And I'd offer per our ordinance that uh, allows up to 15.4 units per acre, even though we know that density is not gonna be there, so. Right. We, we have a commitment from the developer to 120 units, and so we know it's not going to exceed 15.4. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay, we have motion and a second. Do we have discussion? Paul. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Thank you. Okay, next up, resolution 2015-19, excuse me. Approving authorization to expend an additional $40,000 for the state local agreement between the city, Idaho Transportation Department for the project development costs associated with safety improvements at the intersection, Thane Road, Grell Avenue, and 13th Street. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2015-19. So moved. Second. Okay. Is there a discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. That's All right. I can say is it's been a long time. Yes. <clears throat> I can remember going down to the first meeting asking for citizens' comments on the intersections along Thane. And a lot of people uh, made mention of this intersection that it needed lights because it, they felt it was very dangerous. So, yeah, I'm very much for approving the extra money. Okay. Further discussion? Just uh, to educate the public, we might put something on our website or something in the newspaper under the city column, kind of defining exactly what some of the changes are and, and what they affect, how they affect you. I, this weekend I was down, uh, just crossed the Memorial Bridge and the lights were all blinking. So it was on a Saturday morning, it must have been a power outage or something. And I was faced with a blinking arrow and I didn't know what it meant. I couldn't remember that from my driver's license test many years ago. And so we, we, it was a blinking red arrow. And so we might, that's, that's new there. So that well, we might do an education process for the public, or at least for Bob. Okay. For the discussion? All those in favor of approving resolution 2015-19 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries, seven to zero. Next up, Ordinance 4622, potential third reading and adoption. This is amending the City Code Section 37-183, Parent 8, duties of the Planning and Zoning Commission to review and comment as appropriate to Nez Perce County on land use proposals within the area city impact. I'll entertain a motion to read for the third time, Ordinance 4622. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Third reading of Ordinance 4622 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code, section 37 183, paren 8, changing the designation of the Planning and Zoning Commission for the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Councilors, Ordinance 4622 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4622. So moved. So moved. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Mr. Mayor, can I remind you once again, if you're for the reading of all of these ordinances, if you could in your statement um, say suspending the rules. Yes. I, she clued me in. Thank you. Okay, potential uh, reading and approval of Ordinance 4623, uh, repealing City Code Section 37-186. I'll entertain a motion to read for the third time Ordinance 4623 by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4623 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston repealing City Code Section 37 186 and providing an effective date. Ordinance 4623 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4623. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Next up, I, uh, Ordinance 4621, potential third reading and adoption, amending City Code Section 32 3. 
removing the reference to Idaho Code Section 50-1306 and the area of city impact. I entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4621 for the third time by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Motion has been made and seconded. Do we have a discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4621 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending Lewiston City Code Section 32-3, removing the reference to Idaho Code Section 50-1306 and the area of city impact and providing an effective date. All right, Councilors, Ordinance 4624 has been read for the third time. Entertain, uh, entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4624. I'm 21. Oh, I'm 21, I'm sorry. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Okay, next up, uh, item F, <coughs> Ordinance 4624. Potential third reading and adoption, and this is repealing section 6.8 of the comprehensive plan and enacting a new section 6.8 and adopting a map of the Lewiston comprehensive plan area. Um, I have a question on this before we even take a vote. Is this the proper place where Commissioner Tippett was referring to item six on the four and six area of city impact goal statement, appendix A? This would be the place if the council wishes to amend the ordinance to do so, Mr. Okay. Bain. Once the third reading has been held. What's that? You need to approve the third you reading read first, first. And Okay. make an amendment on the subsequent motion to actually adopt. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to read for the third time ordinance 4624, repealing section... Or, do we already have a motion and a second? No, I'm getting lost here? No. Okay. Repealing section 6.8 of the comprehensive plan and enacting a new section 6.8 and adopting a map of the Lewiston comprehensive plan area. So move. Second. You have a motion and a second. Is there a discussion? And this is where we offer amendments? Well, at this point in time, I would, uh, since I don't get to... Oh, read, read, read first. Read, read first. Never mind. Okay. All those in favor of reading, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Approving the third reading of Ordinance 4624 by title only, suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston repealing Section 6.8 of the Comprehensive Plan of the City of Lewiston regarding the area of city impact, adopting a new Section 6.8, a statement of purpose, goals, and policies, adopting a reformatted comprehensive plan area map, and providing an effective date. Okay, councilors. Ordinance 4624 has been read for the third time. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4624. So moved. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. Discussion. Mr. Mayor. Council Ramp. I'd like to propose the amendment to the fourth item concerning the services that we put in at the word stipulated by Count Commissioner Tippett concerning the services. Second. Okay. That's an amendment. So what was that language? Yeah. Mayor, for the record, I'll read that for you. Uh, item four, Nez Perce County should require construction of roads and utilities when adjacent to existing public services. Okay. Dis discussion? Um... I don't know, I guess I can go along with it. Um, personally, I think we should require construction of the rights of way and utilities if it's adjacent to the city limits. That would be the properties button up against the city limits. But uh, that's at the council's pleasure. 
further discussion? Okay. Uh, all those in favor of changing the wording in item four to say Nez Perce County should require construction of roads and utilities when adjacent to city limits or existing public services. Is that correct, sir? Uh, yes, it says when adjacent to existing public services. Okay. But not city, it doesn't mention city limits. It's just only if it's adjacent to city limits with public services, I think is the intent of the amendment, correct? Mm -hmm. I would defer. I don't know that that's the case. I mean, existing public services, that would apply throughout the ACI, whether it was adjacent to the city limits or not. Well, my understanding is, sorry, Mr. Mayor. Yeah. My understanding is that the intent of the amendment is so that it's only applicable when there's already those types of public services adjacent to that property. So, if so, so that way we would not be requiring them to put a, um, a, a sewer, sewer you know, line. where it's a yeah. mile away from the services. That may have been an omission. I mean, this is exactly the way it reads in their um, inter-office memorandum from Allison Tompkins to <coughs> the three commissioners. Okay. So that may be slightly different, though, from what Commissioner Tippett indicated when he was at the podium. But he read it exactly the way it says, it says right here. So. I can't answer the question for you any more than that. So can I, I don't know who this question would be referred to, can I get clarification on what the impact of the amendment would be? Would it be what the memorandum is saying or would it be the impact that Commissioner Tippett had mentioned or somewhere in between? Well, I think the way it's written right now, it applies whenever um, new construction is adjacent to existing public services. But keep in mind, this is a comprehensive plan policy. It says that Nez Perce County should, does not mean they have to. So, um, it doesn't say must, yeah, right? Or will. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, Laura, any? No. So. Okay. Okay. Yes, these are my city council. These are policies and guidelines. They are not. Yeah. As a part right. of the comprehensive plan, they're not right. code. Okay. So I think it's so, okay. Are we clear on that? Okay. So. Those in favor of changing the language on item four? So we're all clear? Yep. We've had it read three times. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries seven to zero. Okay. And any further amendments? Mr. Mayor? Yes. I'd move that we strike uh, number six. <coughs> Second. Okay. The motion has been made to strike item six. Discussion? Particular reason? I don't think that uh, we should be telling the county's planning and zoning commission. I mean, I wasn't on the subcommittee, but it doesn't look like. Uh, I agreed with the statements that Commissioner Tippett said earlier that I don't think that we should be telling them what to do, so I would strike that. Would you agree that we have a vested interest in what happens in the area city impact? I don't disagree with that. Okay. I'm, I'm willing to, to go along with that, but I'm just so we're doing it for the right reason. Not Mayor. because the county told us that we should. I'm not do it. just agreeing to go along, I just think that it's the right reason to, dis to strike it. Okay. Mr. Mayor. Councilor Blake. Oh, oh go about? ahead. Robin. Just to uh, make sure I understand, because I, you know, having participated in the, in the discussion, if we were to strike this, I mean, this is one of these what ifs. So, if we have a situation where there is a platted, there's a construction, a, a, an adjacent development that put roads in, and then someone developed the land next to them, and then beyond them was some other road. The, the they would not be required to hook up to the to the new road the neighbor's road then there could be a dead end and uh, we could end up with a bunch of we could end up with the possibility of roads that go to nowhere or they end up being cul-de-sacs when the intention was to possibly punch them all the way through is that what we would that's correct so if we take that out we could end up with a lot of cul-de-sacs 
It's not like we have any existing Lewis and Orchards, particularly out towards the eastern part. And that's, and that's our argument. That's what we're trying to discuss here is, I mean, finding yeah. out that's in the best interest. Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor Randall. Uh, I would suggest to uh, the Councilor maybe instead of asking to eliminate the phrase, what the real crux of it is is that one word, will, and maybe we should just change that to should. But that's up to the counselor. Should or may. Yeah. I think we've all in with should. As my contention is that this isn't code enforcement like we were no. just talking about. This Correct. is just comprehensive plan. So yep. if uh, if we don't come to a mutual agreement with the county, aren't aren't we subject to litigation? Won't the court decide this mm -hmm. down the road? So why don't we come to a full consensus with the county rather than get embroiled in another lawsuit or have the court decide for us? Well, and again, and whose interests are we here to serve? The people. The That's people's correct. interests. <clears throat> the citizens of Lewiston. And I don't think another court case would be in our best interest. Well, which is where it may end up at someday. I'm not comfortable with that. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, I if you change it to should instead of will, you really haven't directed the county to do anything. And I think that, as I understand it, is the county's objection to it. And Correct. again, these are guidelines. They're not requiring by code of anything. So um, you basically end up in the same place. They've eliminated and you say they should. I mean, it's not a requirement of them that they do it. So. Mr. Mayor, can I ask yeah, a question? That's right. <clears throat> in, that, in light of that, that means that if we had the word should in there and they, <coughs> county, in their infinite wisdom, decided not to follow that, we couldn't, we wouldn't have a leg to stand on as far as going to court. That's correct. Okay. But potentially down the road, we would have should a leg, leg to stand on to request them at the table to have another party of nine. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand and that we didn't do that i think we'd be derelict in our duties to the future yeah there's a reason why planning and zoning is called planning and zoning planning again <coughs> do we want to end up with another hodgepodge of broken up parcels that used to be 20 acres then there were five now they're quarter acre lots up in the east orchards i actually live on one because that was one big orchard so they call it the orchards and that central area is still two big fields completely ringed by single family housing. So, anyways. Mr. Mayor, you do realize there's some people that actually choose to live in the orchards for that exact reason. Oh, sure, that's why I'm up there. Oh. It's the great water we get too. <laughs> <laughs> so, well anyway, I don't know. So, where are we at? We're do we want the counselor's motion to strike? Motion to strike. That's what the okay. counselor wants to stick with. Okay. So, all those in favor of striking item six, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Nay. Nay. Okay. Motion fails. I'm sorry. Was that three, two? Uh, show of hands. Five, okay. two. Five, two. Thank you. Okay, getting back to the wording then, if that would be palatable. Mr. Mayor. Yes. I'd like to propose we change the word will to should. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second. Okay, motion made and seconded. Discussion. I'll vote for this because it's better than will, but since we're not going to strike number six, so. Okay. I think it's a decent compromise again it's a policy decision it's not so I, I, I feel it's, I think it's I feel it's important to leave this in the document because we can come back and refer to it if we take it out then we have nothing to refer to okay and no discussion point down the road I think it's important to leave it there alter it I, I support the amendment to alter the language okay further discussion mm -hmm. All those in favor of the language change uh, 
from will to should. Say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries seven to zero. Any other changes anybody want to make? Okay. This. Okay, so back to the potential approval. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance 4624 with the change in language. As amended, yes. As amended. So moved. moved. Second. Okay, motion been made and second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7 to 0. Okay, ordinance 4625, potential third reading and adoption, amending the comprehensive plan section 14, community design, eliminating the language regarding the area of city impact. I'll entertain a motion to approve ordinance 4625 by title only, suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 It's to read, not to approve. I'm sorry. Approving the third reading of ordinance 4625 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston amending the comprehensive plan of the City of Lewiston, Section 14, <coughs> Community Design, eliminating the language regarding the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4625 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4625. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, okay, next up Ordinance 4626, potential third reading and adoption. This is enacting a new chapter to be codified as Chapter 39. Providing for the orderly development of the city of Lewiston area of city impact. Providing for use zones within the area of city impact. Providing for the administration and enforcement of zoning and development within the area of city impact. Entertain a motion to read for the third time ordinance 4626 by title only, suspending the rules. To move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7-0. Ordinance 4626 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance of the City of Lewiston, Idaho, enacting a new chapter to be codified as Chapter 39, providing for the orderly development of the City of Lewiston area of city impact, providing for use zones within the area of city impact, providing for conditional uses and variances, providing for supplemental regulations, exceptions, and amendments, providing for the administration and enforcement of zoning and development within the area of city impact and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilor's Ordinance 4626 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4626. So moved. Second. second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, next item. Ordinance 4620, potential third reading and adoption. This is amending the Lewiston City Code, Chapter 10, entitled Buildings and General Building Regulations, amending the International Building Code, International Residential Code, International Energy Conservation Code, International Mechanical Code, International Fuel Gas Code, Idaho Plumbing Code, and the International Electrical Code, providing for plan review fees. Entertain a motion to read Ordinance 4620 for the third time by title only suspending the rules. So moved. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7 to 0. Reading the third reading of Ordinance 4620 by title only suspending the rules. An ordinance amending Lewiston City Code, Chapter 10, entitled Buildings and General Building Regulations, amending the International Building Code, International Residential Code, International Energy Conservation Code, International Mechanical Code, 
International Fuel Gas Code, Idaho Plumbing Code, and the International Electrical Code, providing for plan review fees and providing an effective date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4620 has been read for the third time. I'll entertain a motion to approve Ordinance 4620. So moved. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes. Just okay. wanted to remind the public that the international codes, generally speaking, are reviewed once every three years. And, uh, but the Idaho Plumbing Code, I don't know exactly how often they change those. Probably about the same amount of time, I imagine. And of course, the plan review fees, well, they change every time we change the uh, codes most often, so. Okay. That's motion to approve, right? Um, yes. We have a motion to approve. Okay. So we're in 4620. Has been read for the third time. We have, have a motion. We have a motion to, to, vote. to adopt. Just need roll. Yeah, just thank you. So I'll entertain a motion to adopt Ordinance 4620. We already did that. We just need a vote. Okay. Well, that's right. We had discussed. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> getting a little. Okay. Okay. Thank you for keeping me on the straight path. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Uh, next up is vouchers payable to early bird supply. I'll turn this over to Mayor Pro Tem Johnson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Next item on the agenda is vouchers payable for early bird supply and the amount are from January 30th, 2015 through February 12th, 2015. The amount of $1,594.59. I'll entertain a motion to approve vouchers payable for early bird supply. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes six to zero with Mayor Kleberg abstaining. I'll hand the meeting back over to you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, sir. Uh, next item up is resolution 2015-18. This is approving an agreement between the city of Lewiston and the city of Clarkston, providing for mutual aid between the cities. I'll entertain a motion to approve resolution 2015-18. So move. Second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Council Randall. All I can say is thank God. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I, yes. I have some uh, questions for the chief if he'd come down. For me. I was just uh, doing some comparisons between the, this uh, contract and the one that we're about to approve for a Soton. Um, on page three of the agreement, uh, second paragraph, or the second last paragraph states on the, is this the Clarkston one? On the, uh, on the Clarkston one says indemnification by owner, but on the Asotan one it says cross indemnification. Do you know why the discrepancy there? I think it was it when the title was being uh, brought across from the other departments. The language under that is exactly the same. What we found is when those were brought across that uh, that cross indemnification is actually something that's not allowed under the Idaho Constitution. So we added some language in there. There's some Washington stuff for things that have to happen on that side of, of the state versus what we have in Idaho. And um, actually, I would, I would guess... Um, the city attorney could probably answer that a little bit better, but I think it was just the titling. The language is exactly the same as <coughs> those two. It was just the title. Okay. These documents have moved back and forth so many times amongst multiple agencies, so that's probably the only reason why okay. it's there. So I'm just wondering, since they're both Washington documents, if they need to be consistent, if the language underneath One is under consistent. a city, one is under a fire district, so, okay. yep. Okay, and then on the next page, page four, under compensation? Yes. I noticed that uh, in the Clarkston agreement, there's two extra paragraphs that have exceptions in there. That is correct. Why are those in there and not in the so? Uh, one of them is because we already have a contract to provide EMS services, so there is no compensation because we already have an agreement to provide those services. So um, that is that is a uh, a portion that does not need to be in there. 
And then Asotin County does not have any contracted properties, um, as does uh, where the city of Clarkson does with the Port of Whitman. So that's why we have that. So that if we do go to a contracted property, we have the ability to, um, to compensate uh, both ways. And uh, even though we do have compensated property in, in the city of Lewiston, uh, the fire district was, uh, they were willing to provide services without compensation. So that's why those uh, are different in those documents. And that will be the same with some of the future documents coming with uh, Moscow, Pullman, um, uh, Moscow Rural, similar because they don't have contracted properties. Okay, yep. thank you. No, great question. Kind of like our contract with ATK. And sure. Yeah. No. Okay. That's all Any I had. Questions? Thank you. Okay. You bet. Further questions? Okay. All those in favor of approving resolution 2015-18, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7 to 0. Next up, uh, resolution 2015-14. Approving an agreement between the City of Lewiston and a Soton County Fire District Number One, providing for mutual aid between the city and the district. Entertain a motion to approve Resolution 2015-14. So second. Motion been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Mr. Mayor. Yes, Councilor. <clears throat> Just wanted to clarify: Does this agreement uh, with the Soton County Fire District that doesn't cover the ambulance service? That That's we're providing? That's correct. That's a, its own separate agreement. Separate agreement. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Further questions? All those in favor of approving uh, Resolution 2015-14, say aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries 7-0. to zero. And last but not least, uh, this is Ordinance 4627 for the first reading. Uh, this is amending City Code Chapter 6 entitled Alcoholic Beverages, Chapter 8 entitled Animals and Fowl, Chapter 17 entitled Garbage, Rubbish and Weeds, uh, Chapter 21 entitled Licenses, Chapter 26 entitled Parks and Recreation, Chapter 32 entitled Subdivisions, and Chapter 37 entitled Zoning. Entertain a motion to read for the first time Ordinance 4627 by title only, suspending the rules. Second. Okay, motion's been made and seconded. We have a discussion. Councilor Randall. Um, <coughs> this is just for the reading? Yes. First one? This is just the first reading, yes. Okay. When do we propose uh, amendments? If you have one right off the top of your head? Yep. Okay. On uh, Chapter 8, Animals and Fowl, <clears throat> if you'll go to the top list on Section 8-43, it, it wants to include abandonment of animals as an infraction and take it out of the misdemeanor on the second list on the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> one of the reservations I have on that is Idaho code says abandonment of an animal is a misdemeanor. So my understanding is when we make when we pass an ordinance, it can't be less than state law. We can more than we can go more than state law, but not less than. Mr. Mayor, members of the commission, we can by our code, if it's cited to our code, have whatever the punishment is that you wish to be. If you have it different than the state code, then uh, then someone would have the option of either citing it under state code or citing it under city code. So in this case, so if, if we, you keep it as an infraction, so we it can either be fraction. cited as an infraction or they could cite it under state code. So if they cite it under state code, then that falls under the county and... No, and it still falls under defender. our enforcement um, in terms of our prosecution. But what um, the difference is simply that as a misdemeanor, a person is entitled to a public defender as an infraction, they're not. And they're entitled to a trial by jury as opposed to a trial by court for an infraction. And the fines um, are less. And obviously, in a misdemeanor, it can be a fine plus imprisonment in a county jail. So okay. that's what so this is. Difference. not, but this is not out of whack with state. No, I, I mean, we have a number of instances in our code where we have a code that's a city code versus a code that's a state code, and it's up to the whoever's the citing person 
in this case court enforcement or a police officer to decide either under the city code or the or the state code so it would be a choice of what they want to do well I've seen some horrific situations with abandonment of animals and I personally think it should be still kept a misdemeanor okay myself instead so I, I propose to uh, continue the abandonment of animals as a misdemeanor Proposing that in the form of a motion I make the motion that uh, for the chapter 8 and Animals and fowl, that it's still that the uh, abandonment of an animal should be retained as a misdemeanor. Okay. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there discussion? Yes. Councilor Daniel. Councilor Randall. Um, I'm, I wanted to second this just so we get it on on the record. Um, I am going to vote against it at this point, but I'll give it I'll give it some thought between now and the uh, second and third reading. Okay. That's the most I can do right now. All right. Appreciate it. Okay. Um, Sorry, uh, Mr. Mayor. Just, so just to clarify the comments uh, that were made earlier. So if if we voted for this amendment and it made it <coughs> it retained it as a misdemeanor in city code. The lawyer can still choose to prosecute under an infraction, but if they cite state code, is that right or no? No. If you if you keep it um, as a misdemeanor, Councilor Johnson, then then it gets cited as a misdemeanor. So, so they still have the option of citing city code or state code, but they're both misdemeanors at that point. So they both had carry the punishment that's listed oh, for a okay. misdemeanor. So uh, yeah, so basically, our law enforcement could cite under the state code violation of state code, such and such, yeah. as a misdemeanor. For if they're both the same punishment, it really doesn't matter whether they cite city or state code. All you're saying is that okay. So if we, I see what you're saying, I, and I kind of agree with you. Let's. I probably won't be voting in favor just yet, either. I want to wrap my head around this one so further discussion just looking down the road uh, when chickens um, get to our desk are chickens con con chickens considered animals under this yes and so if we had a bunch of abandoned chickens they those people then that would be a, a misdemeanor if they were abandoning their chickens mr. mayor yes I'm not trying to make light of this. I understand. It's coming down the road. <laughs> I, one of the things I was thinking of, too, is we got a lot of areas in the orchards that have horses yes. that can be abandoned. Yes. And I've seen that happen. And so uh, you're, and one of the other reasons is if you include it as an infraction, you only get, under the proposal, you get $300 for a fine. And that's if you can find the person on an abandonment and abandonment situation. <clears throat> However, as a misdemeanor, you can get it up to a thousand dollars. So maybe you can cover your cost for taking care of the animal, whether it's through a veterinarian or or um, hand, uh, one of these uh, nonprofit outfits that take care of animals. <clears throat> and maybe you can take care of the animal that way with a thousand dollars but uh, if you only have it as an infraction you only have three hundred dollars to work with right. so let me just clarify something yes. mr. mayor in terms of you wouldn't recover your costs for any kind of care for the animal under the fine because that's not what it goes to it goes back to the some of it goes to the city general fund when we get it some of it goes to pay courts and that sort of thing but um, what we would do if it is a misdemeanor is um, because it's considered at that point a criminal offense, we would require, um, or we would ask the court for restitution and require whoever the offending party is to pay for those costs. Under an infraction, because it's not considered a criminal offense, you wouldn't be able to get that restitution. But if it's, if given the same scenario, it's in the city limits and they determine it's an egregious offense and they can still cite them under state code, they don't have to use a state That's code. That's correct. 
So they're not required to sign under city code. They can, if it's a code. kind of situation where you've got an egregious okay. situation and you want to try to to get that, then we would urge them to sign it under state code so we could get restitution. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Councilor Daniel. Mr. Bennett, when's our next? Um, I don't have my calendar in front of me. When's our next uh, 6 p.m. scheduled meeting? Our next meeting will be Nine. March. on March 9th. <coughs> Yes. Okay, now we've had our discussion. Um, I move that we table this amendment until the March 9th. Um, okay. Second. I can go along with that. Okay. Okay, all those in favor of tabling the amendment? Say aye. 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 Okay, opposed? Okay, getting back to the reading. All those in favor of reading ordinance 4627 for the first time? Say aye. 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 By title only, suspended the rules. Approving the first reading of ordinance 4627 by title <coughs> only. An ordinance amending Lewiston City Code, Chapter 6, entitled Alcoholic Beverages, Chapter 8, entitled Animals and Fowl, Chapter 17, entitled Garbage, Rubbish, and Weeds, Chapter 21, entitled Licenses, Chapter 26, entitled Parks and Recreation, Chapter 32, entitled Subdivisions, and Chapter 37, entitled Zoning and Providing an Effective Date. Okay, Councilors, Ordinance 4627 has been read for the first time. And moving on to unfinished and new business. City Council comments. Do we have any Council comments this evening? Yes. Just a reminder, we have a URA meeting uh, Tuesday, tomorrow at 12 o'clock <coughs> at the back of the City Hall. I encourage the public to attend. And then we also have an 1145 uh, police retirement finance meeting on Thursday. And we, I do encourage, being, being on that committee, I do encourage that we get better attendance than we had last time so we can get a quorum. So it's 1145 Thursday. Lunch yes. will be provided. Yes. Thank you for the reminder. Mr. Mayor? Yes, Councilor Ryan. I attended the uh, annual CETA meeting. Yes, I'm sorry. And uh, that was a very good meeting. They, uh, they, CETA is changing its focus, <coughs> excuse me, from uh, some, not so much in support of uh, <coughs> trying to find buildings and such for small business, although they're not giving that up. It's just not their primary focus. What their primary focus has turned to is training and education for the uh, skill sets that business is going to require now and in the near future. And so there was quite a bit of panel discussion among several folks that were involved in this kind of thing. And it was pretty interesting, pretty enlightening. Okay, thank you. Other council comments? Um, I won't pontificate, but uh, just a little bit of history, and not revisionist history, it's basically the way it, it is. Um, we were brought to the table by the county commissioners to redo the way we administer the area of city impact. And what had happened is, uh, what precipitated it, and we'd uh, tried to schedule meetings with them several times, uh, we're never able to find an acceptable date. And then we received a letter from the county commissioners stating that they would now be in charge of all decisions in the area of city impact. Um, there was a, there was a uh, conditional use permit filed, I believe it was a conditional use permit, by a gentleman who was purchasing the Lucky Acres facility down on Tammany Creek Road, wanted to convert it to a bullet storage facility. That hearing, took place in front of Lewiston's Planning and Zoning Commission, as the old agreement stated. And the Planning and Zoning Commission took quite a bit of public testimony. There was absolutely nobody there other than the representative of the owner of the bullet storage facility to speak in favor. So the business <coughs> chose to appeal to the county commissioners, keeping in mind that the city of Lewiston was not in charge of the administration of the area city impact. They were acting as an advisory board to the county commissioners. And the county commissioners unanimously thought that that was a great idea to have a bullet storage facility in a residential zone, agricultural zone, against overwhelming op opposition. There's an article that was just out in the paper, and I'm, I don't doubt 
the veracity totally that was in this weekend about the uh, the county's planning and zoning commission and uh, the ability of the county commissioners to properly administer particularly commercial building permits when they can't they said the county was big enough that they couldn't properly track all these commercial building permits and make sure that the, that use was in compliance with the designated zoning of that piece of property, I've got some concerns. Now, I went along with this, adapting our plan so that the Nez Perce County Planning and Zoning Commission would be the advisory board to the County Board of Commissioners in the area of city impact. I am taking the county at their word, saying they are willing to work with us. I guess we will see how it pans out. I'd be remiss if I didn't state my <coughs> misgivings, so. That's all I've got to say about that. And if you, if you want to ask me questions later, certainly feel free to. But I spent four years on Planning and Zoning Commission where we had two areas of City Impact members on that board, and that was specifically why it was created. The new look, makeup of the Nez Perce County Planning, Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission will consist of a minimum of one, maximum of two City of Lewiston residents. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes in the future. That's all I've got. Any other council comments? Mr. Bennett. Just one. Um, we have an important date coming up as well at the end of this week. It's the kickoff to the City of Lewiston's new fiscal year budget process. So that will be our budget workshop that we will be holding at the police training facility on Saturday, February 28th, starting off first thing in the morning, 8 o'clock, running until about 2. And this will be the first opportunity that the council will have to see presentations from individual city departments about what they see as the priorities for their departments coming up during the next fiscal year, which starts in October. But we start early so we can have plenty of time to vet those, to discuss them, to see what your priorities are uh, after having heard what the different departments have to say so we can then settle on a strategy for um, putting a budget together, uh, looking at what our revenues will be, uh, which you know can be um, affected by what the state legislature does. Um, currently, there's a bill before the state legislature that would reduce the amount of construction value that cities receive each year um, as part of their property tax calculation. They would, they're going to cut that in half. And so that they can use that money to fund school capital projects like school buildings, school construction. Um, that's currently pending before the House Revenue and Taxation Committee. So those are kinds of things that can affect revenue situations. So we will be looking at uh, the balancing of, of what our revenues are going to be with potential expenditures and programs, whether it's the community park, whether it's the street or stormwater program, whether it is um, you know, other kinds of public infrastructure that need to be constructed, whether it's uh, more work on the library. All those kinds of things will come into the mix. So we'll begin that process on uh, uh, Saturday, February 28th. And um, uh, I think you know, that strategy has worked really well for us the past couple <coughs> of years. We've done this. It's a good way to start the budget season. So that's where we are. OK. Thank you, sir. Advisory Board and Commission appointments. Go ahead, Mike. Mr. Mayor. We have an opening on the Emergency Services, uh, Med Medical Services Advisory Board. This okay. Time. Anybody's interested? Certainly, that was Citizen at Large, wasn't it? Yes. Uh, on the MSAB Board, uh, please contact Carrie. Uh, Council Randall has requested to be, uh, there's going to be a task force being put together because of the timing of this issue, uh, potentially citing a new airport, a joint facility with the Joint Airport Authority, the FAA, and the City of Lewiston. And they need kind of an answer to their master plan by March 30th, I believe. So I would ask the Council's indulgence, since uh, Council Randall's been uh, the liaison with the JAA, that he participate in that, uh, in that process. <coughs> we will have a presentation on next Monday, as right. far as what's session, going on we'll right now. So. Any other board appointments? We had two applicants uh, apply for the Urban Forestry and <coughs> Cemetery Commission, and I hope to be able to interview them here soon. So with our 
council help. Mr. Mayor? Yes. Is my memory right? Do I think we have one vacancy or something on TAC or a reappointment? We actually have two vacancies and we have two applicants and one still needs to be interviewed. Okay. So we could appoint the one that we discussed previously now or we could wait and do both. It's, it doesn't okay. matter to me. Um, you got meetings coming up soon? Probably uh, not for a couple of weeks. The first beginning of the month. Of oh, March. beginning of the month? Yeah. Well, what's your pleasure? So we, we could move to approve the one that the subcommittee already uh, agreed upon that would be for uh, Brent Barassa. Okay. Entertain motion to appoint Brent Barassa to the TAC. So move. Second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Any others? Mr. Mayor. Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilor. I assume having the fire chief on the task force is being just a matter of course. Or do we need You're to? on that task force? I would hope so. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, work session agenda topics. Do we have anything we want to add for Monday? <clears throat> uh, I'd like to take this time to welcome our new city attorney who's sitting back here, Jenna Gomez. So as she finally gets into the office, please feel free to stop by and say hi. With that, we'll adjourn this meeting. Cool.